OK, I want to show you a really terrific application of determinants. Now, determinants are used all over the place, in the social sciences, the natural, natural sciences, all over the place, especially in mathematics. And I want to show you a really, really surprising application in geometry. I want us to look at, at polygons. And I want us to think about the polygons as living in, in the plane. So you know what a polygon is. It's just a whole bunch of straight edges that are connected to form one continuous you know, piecewise linear loop, never crosses itself and closes up on itself. So there's an inside and an outside, and that's what a polygon is. If, if all the sides have the same length and the, all those interior angles are equal, it's called a regular polygon. And, and also remember that if there's like a dent like that in there, this is just a, a polygon, but there's no dents at all, then it's called a convex polygon. Lots of different types of polygons. But any polygon you want to think of, I want us to consider it. And one of the questions that we've always been asked throughout our life is, how do you find the area of a polygon? Now, of course, the simplest polygon we could ever imagine is a triangle. And we know how to find the area of a triangle. It's 1 half the base times the height. So we know that. But what about more exotic ones? Now, of course, you know, uh, rectangles and squares we can do. But here's a real crazy one. So how do we actually go about this? Let me show you the little secret. The secret is we can just cut this up into a whole bunch of triangles. And now we reduced it to an easy question. Find the area of this triangle, area of that triangle, that triangle, and that triangle, and then you're done. And you add them all up. So the question is, how do you go about doing that? Well, it turns out using determinants, we can find areas of triangles. And then by patching them together and adding them up, we can actually find a really cool formula using determinants that will give us the area of any, of any uh, polygon. The only thing you have to remember is, and this is a little trick, you have to make sure that when you list, when you list the vertices, the coordinates of the vertices, you have to list them, no matter where you start, you have to list them in counterclockwise order. So suppose that you have a polygon, and it has vertices given by x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and so forth, out to the last set. And they are listed in counterclockwise order, just like this. So they're going around like that. Then we can find the area of that by just doing a bunch of determinants. And here is the formula. The formula is the area is always going to be 1 half times this quantity. And this quantity, notice, is a sum of 2 by 2 determinants. And the determinants are x1, y1 in the first column, which is the, the, first, the coordinates of the first point, and then followed by x2, y2, which is the coordinates of the very next point, the kind of adjacent vert, uh, vertex going, again, remember going counterclockwise, and then take that point and pair it up with the next point. So you just kind of take them in pairs, this one, 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 and so forth. Find all those determinants, add them all up, take half of it, and that's going to always give you the area. And, and what's the adding doing? The adding is taking the area of this triangle, adding it to the area of this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. So the sums are nothing more than corresponding to these little triangular pieces. And that's the 1 half because, of course, you know the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So let's just consider the triangle example. And if we consider the triangle example, you'll see why this thing is true in general. So let's take a triangle. And let's do it kind of generically. What do you think? Should we do it generically? I think a little generic is never going to kill anyone. So here we go. We got a triangle. And let's suppose that I'm going to put one of the vertices right here. I'm going to make it a right triangle, so it won't be too generic. And I'll put this one out here. So here we go. So here's the triangle. It's a right triangle, so it'll be easy for us to find the area. Neep, neep, neep. And let's say this point right here has coordinates a, comma, 0. And this has coordinates 0, comma, b. Now, first of all, without doing any work, we know the area of this, because we know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And so what is 1 half base times height? Well, in this case, the area will equal 1 half. The length of the base is a times the height. And since this is a right angle, that is the height, b. So we know the area of this is 1 half a, b. So we know that already. Now, let's apply, let's apply this brand new cool formula that I touted and see what happens. All you've got to do is pick a starting vertex. It doesn't matter what. Let's say I pick this one right here. And all you've got to do now, remember, is go counterclockwise. That's the key thing, counterclockwise, and then create these little pairs of coordinates. And so let's try to do this right now live. So I'm going to apply the formula. Oh, my, that's filthy. Can't do filthy math. 
That is not sanitary. Okay, so here we go. So if I take a look at one half times the quantity, and the first determinant I will look at will be right here. The coordinates of that is 0, 0, and the coordinates of this are a0. Then I add to it this coordinate, a0, together with this coordinate, which is 0b. And then I add to it this coordinate, the determinant of this coordinate, 0b, and then the 0, 0. Now, what does that equal? Well, now we have to actually compute some determinants. But that's 2 by 2, so it's really easy. This is 0 times 0 is 0, minus 0 times a, which is 0, so that's just a 0. Plus, this is a times b, which is ab, minus 0, so that's just ab. Plus, and this is 0 times 0, which is 0, minus 0 times b, which is 0. And check it out. What does it collapse to? 0 plus ab plus 0 is ab, and we get 1 half ab. And there you see the correct answer. This is the area just like this formula predicts. And since this works for the area of one triangle, any polygon can be cut up into lots of triangles, and that's where the sum comes from, and that's why it's important to keep the things in order. And the reason why we go counterclockwise is to make sure the answer is positive. So that's the whole thing. We just derived the whole formula. Aren't you excited? So let's try an example right now live. So you can see the power of this. Suppose that I want to find the area of uh, a triangle that's given by coordinates 3, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 5. Okay, now the naive uh, person might make a classic mistake and say, okay, great, I'll just start plugging into here. Remember, you have to make sure that these vertices are going counterclockwise. So the first thing I would do if I were me, and guess what? <laughs> I am me. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot these points. So let's plot them together. So I've got 3, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. There's a point right there. I've got 1, 1. 1 over 1 up. That's the point here. And then 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, way up here. And so my triangle looks like this. I've got this piece right here. I've got this piece right here. And I've got this piece right here. And you can see that it, it's not obvious uh, what the height of this triangle is. We don't have right angles or anything. And so, so it really is not, uh, not an easy uh, uh, area to compute. But now using this formula, it's really easy. The important thing is that we're going to have to go counterclockwise. So where should we start? It doesn't make a difference where we start. I'll start right here, and then I'm going to go to there, and then I'll go to here, and then I'm going to come back. So that's going to be the order I'm going to use. And you can start a different place, but the order has to remain the same. So let's give this the old college try. So the area is going to be 1 half times a bunch of determinants. So I'm going to start here. This is 1, 1. And I find the determinant with 1, 1 and this one, which is 1, 2, 3, 2. So you see how the order is a little bit different than it was given. This is a very sneaky thing that a teacher could do to see if they can trip us up. But we understand the ideas. We can't do it. So we're going to put in 3, 2, and we go into 2, 5. And then finally, we have to go back home. So we're going to go from 2, 5 back home to 1, 1. OK, so there we have it. Now, what does that equal? Well, it equals 1 half times. Well, the determinant of this is 2 minus 3, so that's negative 1, plus, oh, and these are, I'm sorry, these are pluses here. I'm sorry, these we're adding here. I, I don't know why I put commas there. That's silly. These are pluses, of course. Um, then this is going to be uh, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus um, 4 is going to be 11. Plus, and then here I see a 2, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And so I see a negative uh, 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 together with uh, 11 is about what? I think that's like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, what is it? I can't even do that. So let's see. <laughs> let's do a little side calculation. No, it's 7. I'm teasing you. It's 7. So it's 7 divided by 2. And so the area of this triangle is 7 halves. And it's amazing that we did it without even worrying about you know 1 half base times height. This formula does it for us automatically. automatically. Now, I want to point out something really, really cool here. That suppose we have the answer, and we didn't actually graph it. Is it possible that these three points actually lie on the same straight line? Let's just think about that for a second. Is it possible that 3, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 5 lie on the same line? We know the answer is no. 
Why? Because if they all lie on the same line, then the area of that triangle, well, first of all, it wouldn't really be a triangle. It'd be what's called a degenerate triangle. It'd be a triangle that kind of collapsed onto itself. It would just be a straight line. And the area of a straight line, of course, is zero. Zero, a line has length but no area. And so the fact that we got an answer, seven halves, that's not zero, tells us that these three points are not on the same line, or as we say in mathematics, they're not collinear. Collinear are when, line, when points all live on the exact same line. So it's interesting that another application of this cool formula is to determine if points are collinear or not. If you compute this thing and it turns out that the lines, um, that the, this thing is zero, then you know that in fact they have to be collinear because there can't be a real triangle here. So uh, let me just illustrate that with one last example and then I'll let you go. I know that you want to try these for yourself, but it's fun to do them together too. So I'm going to give you a polygon that I'm thinking of and I'm going to tell you that uh, they're already written in counterclockwise order, the coordinates, negative 4, negative 2, 2, 1, and then 3, 3 halves. So this polygon is actually a triangle. OK, and so now what, what do I want to do here? I want to compute and see if, in fact, these three points are collinear or not. And so what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is I am going to compute uh, the area. And I already am told that they're in the appropriate order. So the area is equal to 1 half times the quantity. Take the determinant of negative 4, negative 2 with 2, 1 plus 2, 1 with 3, 3 halves plus uh, 3, 3 halves together with back home uh, negative 4, negative 2. OK, and so what do I get? What I get here is 1 half times, this is negative 4, and this gives me a negative 4. Negative 4 minus negative 4 is actually 0, plus, and here I get 2 times 3 halves, that's just 3. 3 minus 3 is also 0, plus, and here I see negative 6, and here I see negative 4 times 3 halves. Negative 4 times 3 halves is actually negative 6, so negative 6 minus negative 6 is also 0. So check it out. This whole thing gives me 0. So the area of this triangle is 0, which actually, of course, means that it's a degenerate triangle. All these points lie on the same straight line. These three points are collinear. And just before I let you go, Let's just actually verify that by actually just doing a quick little sketch of the graph of these things. So negative 4, uh, negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2 is right here. Uh, 2, 1. 2 over 1 up is here. And then 3 and 1 and a half is right in here. Do they look collinear to you? They actually look collinear to me. And if we actually take a straight line, you can see for yourself that, in fact, they genuinely are collinear. So, so there's the... There's the degenerate triangle that I described, in fact, but you can see that they all really do lie on this same, this same straight line. So they are collinear. So a great application of, of determinants. It allows you to find areas of any polygon you want in the plane. As long as you're given the coordinates of the vertices and you use them in a counterclockwise way, use this awesome formula, and you, my friend, are good to go. I'll see you soon.